Hello all, Matt here from Vectors 3D Models. Uh, today we're going to have a look at this latest carriage body, which is a South Eastern Railway uh, family or first saloon. Uh, there's one of these left on the Bluebell, missing one end. Um, here you can see I have two versions in front of me. So this one here is the later version with the modified brake compartment and the windows have been moved from there to the end so it's the later version this one here is the earlier version both of these are prototypes uh, so the windows are on the side rather than the ends so this has printed steps and lamp irons on that end and various surface detail you can see inside partitions and still working on the furniture at the moment to put in these so it was designed a few years ago uh, not quite sure what chassis to put them on and of course Hornby then bought out the generic one here at the back um, which is a similar length in terms of fitting and size shape etc and it's a six wheel one as well which is handy um, unfortunately it is four millimeters short so it needs to be chopped and lengthened slightly by two millimeters either end uh, these bodies are not designed to clip on because these ones uh, you can see clip on with uh, three clips either side. Uh, these have screw mountings which you can use machine screws and um, M2 uh, nuts uh, glued into the top there in their little channels. Um, so that's how these fit together. These will be supplied with uh, torpedo vents for the roof. Um, I've sort of uh, designed the liveries for them, so there'll be a you know, sort of purple lake livery uh, similar to the bogey carriage which is on the Kent and the Sussex line as well which is similar to this one but longer. Um, so I'll take you through each step and how it's done. Um, so we'll go over to the generic carriage and show you how it's done. So this is a BR generic carriage from Hornby. Because uh, it's got a six wheeled chassis. I've removed the buffers already, which are awful because they're concave. Um, this unclips from six clips to either side. Um, you can see it clips in with the glazing. So these are quite cheap now, they're about 25 26 pounds between that and 30. So unclip, remove that. Don't need that. And you just need the chassis. What I've done is I've built up a little cutting jig so that will sit there and that can be tilted upside down and cut with a mitre block and a saw. So what I need to do is I need to cut off each headstock end and push them out by 2mm either way. I've got some black plastic card which is 2mm thick which should just do the trick. I'm uh, just showing you uh, the body shell you can see is a little bit longer 2mm each end of the uh, actual chassis so I just need to lengthen the chassis and hopefully we can work on putting it all back together um, I might change the buffers while I'm at it as well uh, but we'll see um, so standard six wheel chassis cut both headstock ends off um, put some 2mm plastic card behind the uh, headstocks lengthen it out and hopefully that should be the right length. So what I'll do now is I'll prep this, ready to cut it, and take some photos, and I'll show you the next part. So welcome back. So I've now removed the two uh, buffer beams or headstocks um, using the mitre block and a razor saw. You can pretty much get those under 20 pounds if you need one, and they're always useful if you like cutting up things like I do. Um, so they've been removed, but what I might do in future is 3D print a spacer so it's the right shape, size, and it's a bit simpler to do rather than hacking through 2mm plastic card like I've done. So putting them to one side, um, so this is the plastic card I'm using, it's 2mm thick and it's been just cut into a long strip, like you can see here, I and mean cut off in width. Um, I roughened it up a little bit, taking the shine off of it, 
and then glued them onto the end. So there's one end here. So this is all glued with Aerodite, which you can see here. Always use Aerodite with injection molded plastic because nothing else works or sticks. Uh, so I've used that and it also works nicely just to fill any gaps. And as you can see I still need to clean off the ends and also the underside before re-gluing the headstocks on each end. But you can see I've added that on here and we are now getting to a reasonable length. It's a little bit short obviously because of uh, because the buffer beams are not on or headstocks are not glued on yet but you can see almost there so next job is just basically tidy up um, re-glue the headstocks on and then we'll go on to the next part which is a bit of a, bit of a mystery because I haven't done it yet so uh, this is all prototypical guessing or prototyping I should say just making sure it fits before you get it Okay, so you join me back uh, with the model here. So this is now actually attached to the chassis, as you can see here. Um, so I've made some modifications to the CAD. So this will now clip on to the chassis rather than screw, but you can do both. Um, I've also made some changes to the partitions so they're thinner and also uh, we've got holes in the top. So if you wish to put some lighting in, you can and you can put the battery in the lavatory compartment which is this end here um, so that's all hidden away so um, that clips on nicely so I've made the changes to the CAD so it will clip as well as screw on to the chassis so that's good so I've also cleaned up the roof a little bit um, so that's really all you need to do to fit this to uh, the chassis and, and get it all uh, looking reasonably good uh, somebody did say to me when I posted some photos up of this that it would probably be restored on a four-wheeler chassis so like a, a van chassis or something like that uh, and they're absolutely right it probably will be um, but for those modeling the Southeastern Chatham or SER um, then they'll probably want to use a six-wheeler chassis like this one so that's ready to go uh, furniture is being designed up as I uh, do this video um, then it'll be painted, so it'll be even a uh, crimson lake or um, purple lake with some yellow lining around the mouldings. Uh, transfers you can probably get from Fox, I think they now do the saloon uh, lettering, which I kind of forced them into doing quite a few years ago. Um, so that's pretty much all, all ready to go. Um, as I say, this model will come with torpedo vents as well, which I always uh, print anyway. So. Um, Hopefully you found this video interesting and um, I'll put the finished product on the end and also in the gallery of the model itself on the Made Me website. So here we have the um, body shell on top of the chassis. So this is after the chassis has been extended by approximately 4mm and the slight difference is now I've 3D printed some spacers which you can see just here so these are the same as the underside for example so uh, you can see here my temporary 2mm uh, shim to extend it um, has now been replaced with something 3D printed and in keeping with the underside of the chassis and this is the correct length so this body shell will just clip on like the old one so it has the clips you can just see through the window uh, one there and one at this end and one down that end so it's two either side um, so you can see this one's been cleaned up for body shell that is and uh, looks reasonably good there'll be some filling and some filing to do when you receive your body shell let's turn it around for you so you can see uh, you'll be able to see some uh, little bits left on the side these need to be cleaned up with some uh, wet and dry sandpaper sand it down carefully I don't recommend a knife on this because it's too hard but it could take you an hour or so you'll need to sand the roof as well this one hasn't been done yet uh, just needs to be cleaned up the holes re-drilled for the torpedo vents uh, we also need to drill the 
uh, holes for the door handles which will be an L shape uh, just there you can just about see one there and one there uh, after that uh, just standard primer from Halfords so you can use grey because this one will be uh, going into okay so the chassis has been done now and lengthened by four millimeters uh, you can see the body shell now clipped onto the chassis the body shell has had a couple of modifications to enable this but I've kept the screw mountings at each end uh, you just need a two millimeter or M2 um, nuts and an M2 uh, brass screw and you obviously have to drill through the underside etc to mount them but this one is using the clips on the inside you can just about see through the windows one in the center there and one at this end and one at this end there's two either either bit of course opposite on the other side and this will just clip on to the chassis so this side's all been cleaned up on the body shell um, it will have, you can probably see some um, support marks on the top, just use some wet and dry sandpaper for that. That will come off quite nicely. Uh, this is a late body shell, you can see by the end. Um, on this side you can see I haven't cleaned this up, I've just used on the other side some wet and dry sandpaper. Um, don't use a knife because you'll probably hurt yourself. Um, and it comes out quite nice. You'll probably need to do a little bit of filling but not too much. On the underside I've modified the CAD again, um, now you can see on this end my 2mm shim to extend it out that way which is just black plastic card but this is all part of prototyping. Um, so what you'll get in the kit, I've 3D printed a 2mm thick um, extension to add to the chassis so it in keeps with the underside of the um, chassis itself from Hornby, you can see those two here, so one at each end. You can see the seating and the bench seats for the saloon and of course there will be two types of this, so early and late versions. Um, but it fits together well, I've tested both and uh, just needs painting, so if you do your research you can probably find out it's in I believe some sort of purple lake or crimson um, with some simple lining around the uh, mouldings but other than that, that is the kit, you'll need to supply your own chassis you need to supply your own paint, lining, transfers which I think you can probably get from Fox Transfers I think um, you'll have the torpedo vents as well which aren't in the picture at the moment um, you'll need to do some drilling for the roof vents and also opening the holes which is 0 0.45 or 0.5 mil. Use brass wire, which is 0 0.45. Um, but what I'll do is I'll continue this recording, uh, showing you finishing of it. But for now, that is pretty much how to modify the chassis and fit the body shell. Before I do go, I will show you the inside of this early body shell, so you can see all the modifications. So we've got the clips here for the chassis. you still got the screws at the end if required. It's M2 nut and M2 uh, machine screw. Uh, this is a strengthening bar so the uh, sides don't bow outwards. Um, you can see all the supports for the seats on the inside. So this is the saloon, first compartment and either a guard or brake or luggage. Toilet is this end. Uh, the other modification you can just about see there's holes in the partitions so you can fit lights and hide the battery in the toilet end if you wish um, but yes it needs some finishing painting if you do need to sort of move the resin put it in some hot 40 degree water and either clamp it or uh, do something along those lines to um, make sure it's straight it does bow in a little bit here but uh, well, I think I've sorted it out now on a newer print so hopefully, um, so hopefully these will be available towards early January, uh, maybe February. But uh, we've got a few printed now, so they should be available soon. Our price should be around about late twenties, early thirties. I just need to do some calculations. Uh, so it's the South Eastern Railway First Saloon or Family Saloon.
um, which you can find more information on the Bluebell Railway website. Thanks for watching and if you want to continue with these, watching how it's been produced and how to finish it, please tune into this channel um, and keep an eye out for future videos. Thanks for now.